Hello, Internet! My name is Ayla Teslermabe, and today I'm going to be showing you three things that you can practice to take you beyond a beginner guitar player. So I think it's important to internalize these three things because, firstly, it'll help you build your technique and technical knowledge of the instrument, and secondly, these three things will give you a really solid foundation to build off of as you improve as a guitar player. And you're definitely going to encounter these three things at some point in your guitar playing. You'll definitely encounter things that build off of these things. And I think the sooner you start to internalize and understand them, the sooner you're going to be improving. And I just said things so many times in that sentence. But let's get into the video. Let's start with number one. So thing number one, the pentatonic scale. And again, if you've seen any of my videos in the past, I have talked about this scale endlessly because it's just so great to know whether you want to be a lead guitar player or even just a rhythm guitar player and accompanist. You know, being able to understand these scales will allow you to always know what safe notes are available to you to use over most chord progressions, which is great. So we're going to start with the minor pentatonic scale. This is a minor type of scale. It's usually used over minor type of chords or in a blues context. And I'm going to show you how to play this scale with the root on the E string and the root on the A string. Because if you have those two shapes down really well, you're going to have most of the neck covered actually, which is great. So let's start with the A minor pentatonic scale with the root on the E string. So here we are on the E string. A is the root note of the scale, because it's A minor pentatonic. And this is how you play it. Fifth fret, eighth fret. Then on the A string, we play fifth fret, seventh fret. On the D string, we play fifth fret, seventh fret. G string, fifth fret, seventh fret. And then the B string, fifth fret, eighth fret. High E string, fifth fret, eighth fret. And if you can't quite stretch far enough to be using your index finger to your pinky quite yet, or your index finger to your ring finger here, I recommend you work towards that because that's how this can become a technical exercise too, to help you build you know, hand flexibility and dexterity with you know, your fingers over here too, your third finger and pinky, which is great. This is the scale that people use most often, I definitely used it the most when I was starting, and I think a lot of guitar players around me did that as well. But at a certain point, you might want to be able to play it somewhere else. And I think it's really helpful to know it on the A string as well. It's a similar shape, but slightly different. And so, again, if we're playing A minor pentatonic, A is our root note. We can find that, of course, you know, the open A string, that's A. But we want to avoid using open strings just because it makes the shape easier to move anywhere else on the neck. We can also find it up here at the 12th fret. So now to play our A string root pentatonic scale, let's play 12, 15 on the A string with our first finger and pinky. And then we're going to play 12, 14 on the D string with our first finger and third finger, ring finger. And then 12, 14 on the G string, 13, 15 on the B string, and you can either use your, you know, second to fourth finger, or you could use your first to third finger, but I'd recommend aiming to use second and four. And then, for the high E string, we're going to play 12, 15, like this. And both of those scales contain the exact same notes. And it just turns out, because of how the guitar is laid out, this scale shape stays the same in any key you're in. And all you have to do is start it from the right root note. Again, let's say I was playing D minor pentatonic. I would just play that exact same scale shape starting from D as the root note. So you might be wondering how to practice that scale. I think. There are a few different ways to approach it, you know, everyone has a preference. Or they might like to use a combination of all of these different techniques. But firstly, 
using a metronome. That's kind of the classic, you know, sitting there with a metronome. This can help you work on your time as well and give you a great way to measure your progress. Some people practice without a metronome as well, but again, be wary of the fact that you want to be thinking about rhythm as well when you're playing. So just keep that in the back of your mind. The last thing I want to say is when you are feeling pretty confident playing this scale, I would highly recommend playing through it, reciting the intervals of the scale out loud. And the reason for that is the sooner you start to see intervals on this guitar, or your guitar, or any guitar, the sooner you're going to be able to start to understand the scale at a deeper level. It'll give you a great starting place to start you know, adding modes to your playing, uh, you know, knowing what notes to play when you're playing in certain musical contexts. And I think it's just really great to have that understanding of what you're playing. And again, an interval is just the distance between two notes. And the interval of a minor third, for example, sounds the same in any key. And it just so happens that it also looks the same on the guitar. You know, it's always just moving up by one, two, three frets. And uh, I think it can start to become very cool to understand that on the guitar, uh, just because it makes the whole instrument make more sense. The intervals you will find in the minor pentatonic scale are as follows. Root, flat third, or minor third, four, five, flat seven. And pentatonic is a five note scale, because penta means five. And those intervals that I just listed for you, repeat. That's all there is to the scale. Root, flat third, four, five, flat seven. Root, flat third, four, five, flat seven. Root, flat third. And that's the same for the A string root. Root, flat third, four, five, flat seven. Root, flat third, four, five, flat seven. And I would really, really strongly suggest trying to approach practicing the scale in that way too. And then you can start quizzing yourself and saying, can I find the fifth in different octaves? For example, there was wrong. And you might be able to hear that's not the same note. Uh, but then over time, you'll build the understanding to both know what that looks like on the guitar and what it sounds like. Because the first time I played it wrong and you could hear that, the second time I played it right, and you could hear that that sounded right as well. And you can also see what that looked like on the guitar. So thing two, point two, let's talk about chords. Because they are obviously a very important part of playing the guitar. And I think progressing on the instrument will definitely lead you to bar chords at some point, And it's super important to start learning those. But before that, really mastering your open chords is a great place to start because it'll help you build the technical technique that you need to get there, and it'll also help you get through most songs. So the system a lot of people like using to, you know, make sure they're learning all the chords they need to build that foundation is using the cage system. And we're not actually going to get into the cage system in its full depth, but we can use the spelling of the word caged to help us here, because caged is a word that starts with the letter C, so knowing your C major open chord is awesome. And then A, knowing A major and A minor is great. G, know your G major chord. Knowing your E major and E minor chords is great, are great. And then using the last letter of that word, D, that reveals to us that we should know D major and D minor. And if you can get through all of those chords, then I, I think you'll have a great practice routine for yourself. And of course, like I said, a great basis of understanding to move forward in your guitar playing. So how can you practice these? Well, going through the word caged is a great place to start because it gives you a nice order to follow. And when you're practicing them, of course you can start by just strumming them like this. But I think a great way to check that you're actually you know, playing these chords as well as you can be, is to go through one string at a time. The reason for that is if, let's say, I'm not putting quite enough pressure with one of my fingers, 
it's really easy to hear immediately exactly what's going wrong. Like, I can see that when I'm playing the B string, it's not sounding quite right. I can see my first finger is on the B string, so I'm going to put more pressure until it rings out cleanly. Because sometimes when you're playing a whole chord and it doesn't sound quite right, it can be hard to tell exactly what's going wrong. So this is a great way to check that. And again, it'll help you ensure that you're building good habits. So to practice this, again, starting with that one string at a time approach is great. And just going through each of the chords that way. There I did not go in order because I was not thinking about the caged written word that we had been speaking about. So I think just stick with that because um, it'll give you a great order to follow. So I should have followed that with an A major chord. That's what you can do. And once you are comfortable going through each of these chords, one string at a time, you can try strumming through them as well. And I think ultimately you wanna to get to a place where you can do that along to a metronome. Uh, because if you're doing that, you're building a sense of rhythm, which is super important as a musician. And it'll also help you work on chord transitions, because that's a huge part of advancing as a guitar player. I think it's great to work on that every day. And let's say you know more open chords than just the caged ones we talked about today. I think you should practice those as well. Add them to the word. Maybe it'll end up being caged because you've added a whole bunch of other letters to it. And you could practice it that way. Long story short, try to practice every chord you know every day in order because you'll be practicing playing them cleanly and chord transitions, and that's great. So the third thing that I think you should practice every day is getting to know your root notes on the E string and the A string, because let's bring it all the way back to that minor pentatonic scale we were talking about. That scale shape stays the same in every key as long as you start it from the right root note. So if you know what root notes to start from, then you're golden. That's awesome. And it's the same thing for bar chords when you get to them eventually. You know, the shape stays the same no matter what key you're in, as long as you start from the right root note. So essentially, I think it is so important to know your E string and your A string really well because then you'll know where to start your chord and scale shapes. So I don't really think there's a right way to do this as long as you are getting to a place where you know those two strings really well. But I think the two most common approaches are to either really focus on your fret markers and what notes fall on those frets, or to learn all of the natural notes, as in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, as opposed to A sharp or C sharp or B flat or whatever, because the natural notes are the ones without sharps or flats. So these are all of the notes that fall on the fret marker frets. On the E string, we have G, A, B, C sharp or D flat, and E. And then on the A string, we have C, D, E, F sharp or G flat, and A. Now if we want to look at the natural notes, this is what that would be like. Here's our open E string. Here's F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And then on the A string, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And you might have noticed that that just follows the alphabet. Awesome. A lot of people know the alphabet, so I think it's great to use it in this context. <laughs> what if I only know the fret markers really well and I'm looking for A sharp and I don't know what fret A sharp falls on? Well, the point is, if you know certain frets really well, you can use them as a reference point. Because maybe one day you'll know all frets equally well, and I think that's a great thing to work towards. But let's say I know A really well. Here it is, at the fifth fret. Well, A sharp is just one fret higher than that, one semitone higher. Or here's A again at the twelfth fret. I could simply find it by moving up a fret. And of course this applies for every other note. And it's about, you know, uh, building reference points for yourself while you're building to a place where you know 
all of the frets really well. But using these reference place, that sentence made no sense. So using whatever reference points you need to find whatever notes you're looking for is really the end goal here. So do whatever you need to do to make that happen. Like I said before, this will be hugely important in allowing you to place scales anywhere you want in any key you want. Same with bar chords. It's the best way to use the layout of the guitar in the most efficient way possible. And I think that's great. So today we talked about starting to internalize that minor pentatonic scale, you know, knowing your open chords really well, knowing your root notes on the E string and the A string really well. As someone who's been playing the guitar for a while now, I think that those three things will help you build a really solid foundation to help you progress in your playing. I think a lot of things build off of uh, the three points we talked about today, and you're definitely going to encounter them at some point, so you might as well start now. So thanks for joining me today. Please feel free to leave a comment down below of what you started practicing to help take you to the next level in your guitar playing especially as a beginner. I'd actually be really interested in knowing that and maybe we'll do a video on it in the future. So I'd love your feedback. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.